Hi everybody, welcome to your Christmas prep class. This is week five, which I don't know how many weeks there are left to Christmas, but that's kind of what happens is that all of a sudden it just goes so super fast. So today's project is one where we're actually going to use, we're gonna do a couple, um, some weeks where it's mostly just all stamp stuff and that's what today's is. So the only thing that you'll need to get that isn't stamp stuff um, would be a little thing of light. So we're gonna use um, two things that are in the holiday catalog. So if you don't have them, they're current, you'll be able to get them. But there are things that you may already have that would work um, because we've had past house sets before and we've had lots of little um, like box kind of things. So you could look around and see what you already have. If you have a lot of Stampin' Up! stuff, you may have something that would already work. Um, but I'm gonna tell you this new little um, box thing here is the best little box that we've had to put things together. So um, let's get going on the stamping part of it and then we'll start putting it together. So to make the Christmas house, there is, I did post a video and I'll show you the Halloween house. Um, same concept. I don't show how to make the, the box part or how to do the windows on that. I just show the house. So for this one, we are going to do on the um, coming home bundle. It, the house is kind of build. So for this one, and I collect these old houses. Um, I've done it for a long time, so I have a lot of them. And most of mine are like the vintage pinks and blues kind of the greens so that's where we're going with this and you can see them in antique stores when I first started collecting them um they were fairly inexpensive and over time like it's a thing that people do now and so they can be 25 30 50 dollars for um some of them I'm not paying that much for them anymore I have enough that I can fill my the top but I thought this might be fun to give my nieces um, to get them going and we could even make some together. So, oh, that didn't stamp up because I'm talking to you guys. So you do want to get, this is why my stuff's dirty because the back of the stamp's dirty. So you can um, kind of have a look in the catalog. You can kind of look online and see how different people have built them. You can make churches, you can make post offices, you can make just houses. But for these houses, you would definitely want to do them 3D. Um, it would work better if you were stamping on your foam mat. So there we go for this one. So this one, I'm just going to do two houses. Though, um, if you want to do these, you can watch the Halloween card because I did the house. It's the exact same house that I did on the card and you could just color it Christmas colors. It's a three mount one and just color it Christmas colors. So here's two. And then if you wanted to do it, these for a gift, you could do the same little house and then color it, like make the same little box and do it like a summer or a spring and just give them the little box with the little lights and then they could just switch it out all year round. It'd be fun for a little um, desk ornament for work. Am I gonna be able to make this fit? I'm gonna switch back over. This is shimmery white cardstock that I'm working with. Um, you wouldn't have to use it. I just think if you're going to make something that um, people are going to keep, it's the nicest of the cardstocks. And I'm going to color it with blends. I'm coloring mine with blends. Again, you could color it with whatever. You could watercolor it. You could do the shimmer, the shimmer paint with it. It will all look beautiful. Um, and I'm going to tell you the colors that I'm using. And then I'm going to um, cut away so you don't have to watch me color it. Because again, you can go watch the... Halloween one if you want to see how to color it. Now, because we are going to make this be a light up house and even if you buy the antique ones, the ones that are super expensive, you usually have the windows intact. The ones that are, you know, 50 years old, a lot of them have their windows popped out. But a lot of times they're made with cellophane or vellum. So we're going to need to cut these windows out for our lights to be able to shine through. Um, so when I cut them out the first time, I thought, well, I'm just going to have holes and then that looked bad because at first I tried to cut all those little boxes and that was a nightmare. So what you need to do is you need to just get the windows on here. You don't need to get um, the whole thing stamped. Um, so like you don't need to stamp the top again. And on this house, the door is gonna be the one that we use. Now, if you have stamps on vellum, this is the vellum out of the catalog. It takes longer to dry um, the normal cardstock. 
So either you can stamp it and then just set it aside and give it a long time to dry, or you can heat set it. And I'm going to heat set ours. Um, just for time. And then if you're making this and you've turned your furnace on in your house, it will dry a little faster. If it's raining outside, it may not even dry at all. Um, if it sits there for hours, so you'll definitely need to heat set it. So just do those. So I'll tell you the colors that I'm gonna use. And then I'm going to heat set those and finish coloring. So I chose all light colors because I wanted them to be pastels, kind of like the um, ones I buy. So I have the um, Petal Pink, Mint Malcaron, and Seafoam. And then just all the lightest. I have Gray Granite and um, Slate. And I must have Crumb Cake. Yes. So we have just the house is going to be in Petal Pink. And I like I colored it fairly lightly and it was still a little dark for what I wanted. And so then I'm gonna go back and lighten this up. So I will color it and then I will come back and show you how I'm gonna lighten them all up. Okay, here we are um, and I've colored them. Obviously, if you watch the Halloween video, this is going to be covered up here. So you don't have to spend time coloring stuff that's going to be covered up. Then um, this again will be here and the wreath will go over the top. So the middle of your wreath needs to have some roof color in it. So it's gray granite. Um, so you just need to do a little swash of gray granite in the middle of your wreath. So it doesn't look like it just has a hole in it. So whatever color you do, your, your roof needs to have that in the middle. Um, and then you can see that even though I barely colored petal pink on here, it's still a little pink for me. So I'm just gonna take the brush tip of my um, color lifter. And it also, the other thing that it does, it kind of gives it a little bit of a vintage tinge. Cause it kind of just kind of erases it away. And the same thing on my trees, the trees, and all of it later, we're gonna add a little bit of a wash of the um, white shimmer paint and that will help as well. But this just kind of lightens it up. It kind of gives it a little bit of a smeary look, which I like for this because again, we're going for that old vintage -y feel. So just kind of color over it. Cause it literally does lift some color out. You don't wanna erase it all cause you don't wanna just take away all that work you just did. But you can see there, it's already kind of lifting some of it up. And it kind of just gives it the, the feel that it has sat over time. Now, here is the most um, tedious part. It's not, it's not difficult. It's not hard. Everybody's going to have to go. In fact, it's so old school that Stampin' Up! used to sell them. Because a long time ago, we didn't have fancy things such as paper cutters and die cut machines. So we had X-Acto knives. So even if you don't have an old one that we used to sell from Stampin' Up! That's my, mine is even a little rusty. Um, I know y'all have an X-Acto knife. And then this is just our piercer mat. But any kind of foam mat, anything, you know, that used to... Um, that you can press on. You just need to cut. Um, the piercing mat's nice because you can really cut down deep into it. And you're just gonna trim out your windows. So again, I'll do a couple of these and then I'll finish the rest so you don't have to watch because it's literally just taking a square out. Um, or a rectangle, I guess. I It, it brought back... Um, some old school Stampin' Up! memories for me, from me, because we didn't used to have punches. We didn't have a die cut machine. We didn't have a paper cutter. For a, a good few years when I first started doing this, and we used to exacto knife a lot of things. Um, and you had to keep it away from your kids because my daughter was a baby, so you know, this did at one point have a little cap that came on it. I've since lost the cap. But they're cheap. So see, it doesn't take it doesn't take long at all. 
but you know, we used to try to do shapes. We used to try to, like back before there was the die, this would have been an option to cut this whole thing out. Um, but it was always a real thrill when we tried to cut a circle out because there were no circle punches. And then, you know, we had various assorted circle cutting apparatuses that made their ways through the years. And then when we finally first got a circle punch, it was like, what is this magic that will cut a circle? And, you know, then you were limited to whatever size that circle was. But, you know, you would find that perfect cup or plate or saucer that just happened to be, you know, good for a card front. You would go to the Goodwill and scour, you know, to find something that you could trace. So you could trace the circle and then you would have to take this puppy and, um, cut a circle. So I can still do a rectangle. So you're going to do this. I'll do these and then I'll come back. Okay. So you can see that we have all of the windows cut out. It doesn't, it really doesn't take long at all if you haven't used an X-Acto knife for a while. In fact, I will tell you that I, I looked around, I'm like, we must have some kind of die. We must have some kind of punch. What can I cut the windows out? And then I saw this because I've kept it. Um, partly just because it said stamp it up and then I thought I can do that and I was shockingly um, surprised at how easy it was um, see and then you end up in fact I almost didn't want to throw those away because I like I was like those are so cute I could do something and then I'm like throw those little things away um, those are, could make an appearance on um, the things that are sitting on my desk right um, so now to get our um, house to stand up and hold the lights we are going to use the little treat box now you may have another kind of box so you don't have to use this if you don't have this or if you have something else that will work and you're not going to need these little tips so this takes a half a sheet of cardstock but this is some scrap that i have and it's enough so don't feel like, like you're going to have to cut these little pieces off to just waste them because you don't need all that so now we're really almost done with this so this, whoops, this goes in like this, and you don't need those parts. This is too big this way. This is an old scrap piece of cardstock that I have that actually has a little bit of texture to it, but it doesn't matter because nobody's going to see it. Oops. Okay, I think what I'm doing. So I need the actual box, but I don't need these tips. So this way. And if you didn't see me do the video for this, then I'll show you how this goes together. Let's roll that through. And this is in the um, holiday catalog. And with the sale going on this week, I have some additional freebies on Wednesday. So if you don't have either of these, they're not part of the actual Stampin' Up! sale, but they would be part of my extra stuff on sale um, to get some extra freebies. So you might want to get them then. So then just put these, these two through. And if you're not doing this for yourself, if you're doing it actually for um, a gift, then it would be super cute to do um, as a gift and give them more than one season. Cause you could do a winter house, a Valentine house, lots of the different little embellishments that we have. Um, a spring one. Or you could even have a little house decorating party and have people come over if you're someplace where people can come. So see those cut out. And then we need this little um, tree line. And then you'll want to watch the Halloween one because I use one of the other tree lines. This one doesn't take hardly anything because these houses are taller than the Halloween ones because I use that taller house. So let's put this on here. And I don't use all of the trees. So you just want to get some trees either side. So this is plenty. Get one tree on each side. And then here they are. You get your wreath and your little trees. And then this is probably, and this is gonna be cut down, um, but you'll just trim that to about how much you need. 
this will get all of our die cutting done at once. So this little box goes together. It already scores everything for you. So fold these up. Just like this. There is a little treats class coming up too. I can't remember if it's one where you get the pieces. If you get the pieces, then you could sign up for that. And then you could have this to make this. And then these little things slide in here. So normally when you make this box, then you don't really have to put much adhesive on here. But for this one, you're going to have to put a ton because we're going to end up cutting it. And because you want the other side then to hold it all together. So fill both sides up with adhesive and they might not be even because you know we just unless you cut the whole thing off and you're cutting them but fill that whole thing with adhesive like that and then this side is a little tall and that's just because I just randomly ran that through there so that's how simple that is and then just kind of press it so it holds now here's these here so to see if your vellum has dried just take a piece of scrap paper. Where did I just put the scrap that I colored on? I, I, I lose things without moving away. So you just take it and you um, flip it upside down. You can tell it's vellum. So both sides you can see. Good thing I touched the one that wasn't. And if it's dry, you can see where the wink kind of ink wells up. That was not dry, but it's pretty good. So then get that off there. So you just need the windows. So what I did was you need enough um, then left to glue as well. But this one, you don't need the door because if you leave that door, it's going to cover it up. And you'll see what I mean. It's going to be like putting a puzzle back together. So I left a little bit that I could hold because even though you've done that, there may be a tiny bit that still has um, wet. So see, now I have a little piece to hold. So you're just going to put that there. Um, so put some adhesive on. Either side there. And then just take this on here. And literally you're just putting your windows back on. So it's not difficult. But you're gonna see that when you lay this on here, see you're gonna, you don't wanna be able to see all that through. So now what I did was I just laid this on where I knew I was gonna lay my house. And I took just a light marker. So just take your light petal pink or one of your light ones or even a pencil. And I just laid this on here. So I'm gonna glue my house here. So this part has to be gone, this part has to be gone. And I just kind of drew a circle. Like all that has to disappear, right? And then take this, and I still have my little piece down here to be my little hold. And see it, those little circles, all that has to disappear. So I kind of just went up in here. And you kind of feel like you're playing the operation game or something. So first, start with the smallest piece where you got all that out. And I think there's probably still a little bit up here that might have to go. Maybe not. Yep, you can see where it's still in my windows because you don't want that showing through. So again, kind of round that out. On my other one, I used a pencil, but I don't have my pencil laying here anymore. And I can see where that has gone in there. So we're getting closer. Just gonna do this a little bit bigger down here. You feel like it shouldn't be quite that big and that's why you wanna make sure you have enough adhesive on there because you don't want this all to fall apart. There, we're getting it. So now we just have a little bit of ceiling at the top. Really needed to go more straight than circle. I did the Halloween one after I did this one, so now I'm confused on which one I'm doing. 
And if you're gonna do several of these, I would probably, what I would do, um, if you're gonna do more than one, is make a pattern. Because this needs to come out too. So you kind of know, just like, just do one without coloring it and be like, this is where it needs to be cut. It would even help you for coloring because then you're not wasting your time coloring anything. There we go. So now all that's covered up. I'm gonna trim off all that um, vellum when I'm done. Now we need our other little thing of windows and this one does get the door. So go all the way up on it. And you can have some of the um, roof be where you're gonna. And again, I just have this little piece here to hold on to so I don't have to touch any inky spots. And just piece it together, just like a puzzle. And you can see it's here. And then for this one, you have all this here, where you can put um, some adhesive because then you're gonna be able to stick it to your box as well. So now I'll take this. And if this bothers you, it kind of bothers me because the dies, you know, they don't cut exactly flush too. So just trim that off, it's a straight line. After you just did all that with the X-Acto knife, you can get a straight line with some scissors. So just put this on here. This needs a little bit more adhesive over here. So you just kind of keep messing with it until it's all just how you like it. So there, now we have it. And once it's all here, there should be extra adhesive everywhere that you can kind of press down. And then just kind of add some. And then you're gonna take your little piece, little piece of ground that I haven't even got off my tray yet. So we have this, which we can go ahead and use to hold this, some of this together. But it's bigger than what it needs to be, so we've got plenty of room to work with. So we'll let that sit there for a second. Now, the same thing's going to happen on your box. That's why we put lots of adhesive on it, because if you just stick all this here, then you just did all that work to cut those out, and your lights aren't going to show through. So you pretty much need to take one side of your box and trim out. And if you're using a different size box, then you'll have to figure it out. I figured this one out for you. So you're gonna do this here. That's why you had to put so much adhesive that you knew you got those edges. And glue dots, if you're a fan of the green glue, it would work really well on this project. I'm not a fan, um, cause I think it sticks everywhere, but I know some of y'all love it. So let's get this on here. And then I'm gonna carefully move this out. I've just had that kind of place in, holding a place so it didn't touch my table. And now this can go here. And now this is all touchy. And now we've got a little bit more areas that we can add adhesive. And it doesn't take a lot. And now this, you can see how much, how way too big this is. This just needs a tiny bit of snow here. And it doesn't have to be any kind of straight because it's just giving the illusion of some snow. I tucked it up. It's nice to use the seal because it's movable for a few minutes. So kind of tuck that up under. There. And then kind of press it down. And now you can trim off. 
Oh, what extra vellum you have. There we go. You don't need this tree, obviously. And then these two trees are just acting as some place for us to actually use as glue. So you're gonna take this tree here and put your glue on it and stick your big tree right on top of it. And then your little tree, it's gonna go right on top of your little tree over here. So those trees don't actually get seen, but they're great to have because they actually do help um, with the holding of it. And then if you have, like if you want to get some cotton, um, because the old, old ones all have like snow and things on them. Just add your little wreath up here. And then our final touch before we put our lights in is I just took some white shimmer paint. It gives it that, you could add some glitter because a lot of them have glitter. I did take a glue dot on my other one and I attached it right here so that tree didn't keep doinging up, but there's not enough really to keep it, to hold it with some seal. Again, if you're using the green glue or even the fine tip glue, that might be a good option. But everywhere here where the, I could just put a tiny, tiny little bits of the white shimmer, the gold I think would be too much, unless you're doing blue. If you're doing one of the blue houses or a different, like a stronger color, but just kind of add that on there. So that's how it sits. And then I took one of these strands of lights. I just got them, I think at Target. These are the um, ones that come with the, the batteries and they have the little on off on them. And you can get, these are the copper ones. You can get silver or gold or um, whatever color. For the Halloween ones, you can get ones that are more Halloween colors. I'm looking for my lid. So here's the one that has like the glue things holding it all together. I did add a little bit more um, snow to the, the bottom. And then you just take this, you can see it stands up really nicely and you just jam them. These are the ones that are on the, um, I, I may have gotten these from Amazon. I will look, but these are on the, like the crinkly. You don't want them on the green wire because this is a pretty tire, tiny little box. So if I got them from Amazon, I'll put the link down in the thing. But then you see when you stick them in here that all of your lights, and so that's why it was really important to get our tiny little door cut out. So here's this one. If you haven't watched the Halloween one yet, I only have one strand of lights. So, um, cause I use these all over the house. I actually prefer the plug-in ones. Um, they're a little bit more expensive, but then you don't have to use batteries. So, and I often leave them plugged in forever. Um, but then you can flip a switch and they all come on. So here's the Halloween one. So here's the, the Christmas. Let's see what our new one looks like. I didn't want to touch it because I had the, I just put that paint on there. Make sure all of our lights light up. See there, that tree needs to be attached. You could add pearls, you could add, um, like I said, the cotton. You, a lot of the old ones have cotton coming out of the um, tops of the chimneys. Oh, and I also did take a little bit of the shimmer paint and I just put it in the corners of the windows so it looked like snow had fallen into the windows. And then here is the, the Halloween one. And the only thing that's different really that I did that I, I didn't add the snow and instead of the white shimmer for the snow at the bottom, it's the black. And then I used the dyes. This is the dye that comes from the trimming the town, but this little dye here is from the Halloween set to add the thing. But you can see on this one, it's three of the houses. It's the same back house and then two of the smaller houses. Um, there's ways to make them be churches, um, 
by the way you arrange the houses. So just go online if you're interested in making a whole little village. But you can see just from the three of these, if you color them different, they'd be super cute in the um, summer colored as colonial colors. So if you're making them for a gift, you could go ahead and just do like an Easter village or a summer village and do a, a gift. It doesn't have to be Christmas if you're doing it for a gift. So if you have any questions about them, I'll see if I did get these. I may have gotten them at Target. Um, I think a lot of places sell them now. When I first started getting them, they were harder to find. Um, but I think a lot of places, even Lowe's and Home Depot often have these. Um, TJ Maxx and um, Home Goods often have them sitting over. In fact, I saw them at Home Goods um, in the Halloween colors. I think they come in orange and purple right now. That would be really cute inside one of these. So that's what this week's is. I will see you again next week. Next week is, is not all um, craft stuff, but it's another gift. So have a great week, guys, and bye.